Well, it seems we have plenty of new additions to this collection. However, these two seem to be much more troubling than the rest. Name, scene, age, 23, species, human, race, Caucasian, weapon of choice, general sword, personality, cold, harsh, calm, appearance, red eyes, black hair, the final co-commander of the Shi Wong army. I have heard he is the most talented in his land. He is definitely going to be a problem. We'll have to take care of him immediately. As well as his little sidekick here. Name, Kasumi. Age, 22. Species, human. Race, Japanese. Weapon of choice, throwing axes. Personality, quiet, bold, brilliant. Appearance, red bow, one eye. Strategist of the Shiwong army. She is also the strategist to see. And from what I've heard, she can come up with very dastardly strategies. She will definitely need to be put down along with scene. Not that I have any doubts, of course. So enough about these two. Let us move on to the more interesting subject. Hmm, there doesn't seem to be much of a background to this one. Quite mysterious indeed. We do at least have some basic information. Name, Ayame. Age, 35. Species, Kaijuma. Race, Japanese. Weapon of choice, Warfan. Personality, calm, manipulative. Appearance, demon eyes, black hat. Associated with the Shiwong army. This woman, she seems awfully familiar. And something is very unsettling about her, especially that smile. And it probably doesn't help that she has a manipulative personality. If what I've gathered is correct, she is a well-known strategist. A well-known strategist with some very dark strategies. I can only imagine what she would do under Kuno's command. But it's strange. That aside, she looks oddly familiar. I know she is not associated with Sin or Kasumi. And yet for some reason she has quite the relationship with them already. But what could the reason be? And also, what does a Kaijima have to gain from working with the humans? That seems quite odd. For someone like her, she could pay off very well as a mercenary. But this is strange. I know I've seen this woman from somewhere. Or at least something familiar about her. I think I have it. This is where I got it from. Nayame is the aunt of Kuru. Kuru is the well-known strategist, dubbed the most brilliant in the land. She is the one who helped Light conquer the land. Was told that if it wasn't for her, his chances of conquering it would have been slim. If that's the case, then Ayame is a very, very dangerous subject. Perhaps she is one who will have to be eliminated right off the bat along with Sin and Kasumi. How oh, strange. Aside from all this detail, it seems we have no more further information on Ayame. Why she's in this land to begin with. What is her goal? It seems we won't be able to find that out for now. So I suppose, Ayame, you will remain a mystery. But in time, I get the feeling everything about you will soon be revealed. But for now, let's just see you in action. What's up, Warriors of Jigoku? Woo! So, it seems we got a little bit of a mysterious character here, don't we? And honestly, I'm perfectly okay with that. So, like mentioned, this is Kawaii Tostee, a.k.a. The, pretty much the inspiration behind the Kuru character. Uh, this is pretty much the non-canon, as of right now at least, actually. The character itself, from what she's shown me, is pretty cool. And honestly, be due to this, and because of, I guess also due to the fact that this has been a very good, uh, she's been a huge supporter, Ayami is actually going to be one of the main, sub I guess you could say, subjects of this non-canon series. So, like Kuru, the uh, character, 
we just, I decided to go along with what she wanted in terms of this character being mysterious because she wants, I guess she wants the entirety of the of Kuru's family to seem to have like a bit of a mysterious background because for one, I have given no information on Kuru's like family aside from her sister and her, uh, and actually no, I've never even mentioned Kuru's parents. So it's actually pretty cool that uh, Kawaii Tostale decided to put in a non-canon, for now, uh, relative, which is Ayame. And actually, I really dig Ayame's character. I like how she's a little bit, like, she's a lot like Kuru, but just a little more darker and a little more manipulative and stuff, which is really cool. It keeps to the lore of the character and everything. And it almost, and it almost makes me really want to bring Kuru into this story. But I'm not 100% sure yet if I'm going to or not. Also, if you've noticed, I have some new people for the uh, whole young army. Uh, so shout out to Hate Power Noob, aka my boy Skyler, for uh, entrusting me with a couple of his characters as well. So that's going to be a couple other characters that are going to be shown down the line. And as you can see, we got Scene and Kasumi here as well. So I thought, I don't know, I thought it'd be pretty fitting to put them in here. We did just showcase them, so for now they're replacing Hikari and uh, Kuno. And now we have Kasumi and Scene taking the reins. As well as some of your guys' character in here as well. Obviously you gotta have the death, the death bitch herself. I, uh, Mirabelle, excuse me. So to say Ayame. But, uh, that girl is terrifying in, in uh, my raid, if I'm not mistaken. Uh-oh. Another character of Skyward's actually. I decided to put in uh, the whole young just so we could also show some of the other characters that are going to be showing off in the future. And also to show, yes, I'm doing them. So don't worry. So if, obviously if you don't see your character here, don't worry. I'm still, they're either in the other army or they are being finished up or something. Or I just didn't put them in here. But don't worry, you'll be able to see them when I do the, uh, do the whole like reveal of either the character or do the showcase thing that I usually do. For this week, probably won't have one. They'll probably, we'll probably just keep going down the list of the characters and everything. I'll have to look at who's next. But aside from that, we are, we're looking pretty hot right now with all this stuff and it's pretty cool. And I have to say that this one, Ayame's was nice. Not, be not because I didn't have to read a backstory, mind you, but I actually liked how like I said, the mysteriousness behind the character is really cool. I love characters with mystery behind them. And I love the fact that she kept, once again, kept the lore. And of course, you guys don't have to. I love it when you guys don't do that either. I'm perfectly cool with that. Don't let what I'm saying here, like, literally, it affect, like, oh, well, now we have to stick to his lore. Not at all. I said you guys can give the backstories of whatever character you want. You don't have to have it stick to my lore. Because for this whole thing, this is pretty much... This non-canon uh, story for me is... Is one a chance to for you all to show off your characters and with the non-canon story it's allowing uh all it's pretty much just having all these characters like artarian and co for example they're pretty much been pulled out um, if they're not part of this lore they're pulled from like from another universe or something so consider it kind of like a warriors orochi kind of vibe where they're getting pulled from another universe and now they're just trying to find answers or trying to get back home and the best way to do that <clears throat> is to side with the with the army that they find the best <clears throat> and to relieve themselves of the chaos before they can get home. So that's pretty much what this is. Now, obviously not every single character is probably like, oh, Bloodshot, I love that. And if you are one of those characters, cool. But obviously characters like this that stick to the lore, it's also pretty interesting because I can also add my own twist to it as well and uh, be able to say some pretty, pretty cool stuff in there for this mysterious character who I'll also be showcasing eventually as well along with a couple other characters that are quite mysterious. But I assure you that you will event you'll for some you'll be like, oh obviously it's this person or this person. For others you'll be like, oh who's this character or something? That's pretty cool. So you might see familiar faces with this along with oh my god. I'm not trying to finish it yet, Acne. Get out of here. Like, go away. Like, beat it. Just beat it. Oh, he's backed up. Good. Lightning, perhaps, will save us. Or not.
But yeah, this actually does help in certain ways to also know a little bit more. Oh, Jesus. Okay, that was some lag. Uh, the, to know more about Kuru as well, because now I feel like I can possibly, in this non-canon, also maybe, if I do put Kuru in here, uh, this is a good opportunity for me to put her in here, because, like I said, like like said in the backstory, Ayame is the, uh, the aunt of Kuru. And who knows, maybe being able to, like, put her in and have some dialogue in. But like I said, I don't want to put too many characters of mine in here. So that's why I'm so reluctant. Maybe I'll do a nice twist and maybe she shows up later on. But I really want to give you guys the spotlight here for Fanlore Friday. So we'll see how that goes. For now, I kind of had the max amount of characters that I wanted to put in myself. Because like I said, I'm also making other characters as I do this. Because, oh, nice combo here. Who's Who did the Inferno? Who did it? Who's, who's, the, who's the wise one? It was Molly. Shout out to Molly. Another one of Skyler's characters. That was pretty that's pretty dope. That's some teamwork right there. But yeah, so it's it's just really, really cool. And so I'll I'll consider I'll consider putting her in because like I said, I got like I was saying before I uh, got interrupted by the Inferno. Uh, that I'm going to be making more characters for this. And I've already made like pretty much the main antagonist. I actually have a cool little twist since this is completely non canon. I can actually like make relatives like uh, Kuru did to like other to like my characters. So who knows? Maybe you'll see like stop, stop. Maybe you'll see one of my familiar faces have like maybe a sibling or something. I don't know. We'll find out. Because even though we just hear the voice of the person who's behind the scenes, pretty much the mastermind of the war of this universe right now that we're in, this non-canon universe. Um. He does, of course, have lackeys, and he also has his other means of making allies and such. So, all in all, this is it's really cool. And I'm really, really looking forward to getting more and more deeper into this Fanlore Friday, a.k.a. this non-canon story. So, hope you all are just as excited as I am for this. This is, this is, this is, this is cool. It's getting good. Especially with things like this. I love... Because I lo for me, I don't know why. I'm, I'm someone who loves characters with mystery. Oh, that's cool. Wow, what a dick. What a deck. Let's just freaking kill him. Yes. Also, I don't know if you can tell. Allergies, I think, are starting to kick back in, which is why I may have sounded a little bit on the deeper side with the... Oh, nice. I'm fine. I actually am. That did, like, no damage whatsoever. Okay, I was hoping for a little bit more damage there. Doesn't matter, because he's dead. Shout out to uh, Ayame and Molly, freaking beating the crap out of him right there. Scene was there too. He was there. So, alright, guys, this will be it for this video. I hope you all did enjoy it. I know there wasn't as much backstory to this, but I'm going along with what uh, Kawaii Toste wants. And because they are also sticking to my lore, I was like, you know what? I'm interested to see how far she'll go with this. So, we're going to let this just ease on. And maybe once we get into the more Empire's version of the game, of the Fan Lore Friday stuff. We'll be able to see more of it, but I'm kind of interested to see what kind of direction she's going in with this. So, yeah. This is cool. I hope you all are ready to see some more Bayami probably in the future. Because, like I said, she's probably going to be one of the key players in this story so far. From what I've seen. And, no, that's not really me playing favorites. She told me about this before. She's actually one of the ones who encouraged this non-canon story. So, that's why I'm letting her have at this. Because she's also helping me with this story and everything. And helping me, like, figure out what... She with like villains and uh, like like lackeys and other things that the main villain has associated up his or has up his sleeve, I guess you should say. So I'm letting her have that. So it's not favoritism. She's actually the one of the people who are actually helping me with the story. She's pretty damn creative. So with all that being said, guys, if you all did enjoy checking out the strategist known as Ayame, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below as well your thoughts on the character. And if you guys are wanting to make a fan lore Friday character and uh, and want me to showcase them. Be sure to join our Discord because that is where we are doing it now. If you guys do want to, of course, also you can put it down in the comment section, and then we will also put it in the uh, in the Discord server that way as well. That's perfectly fine. So, if you do want to do it yourself, be sure to join our Discord server. And if not, then like I said, put it down in the comment section down below, and then we will put it. Just be sure once you make that person, be sure to give the affiliation. So the Shi Wong Army, the Hu Young Army, and the Kage Army. So I'll be sure to let you guys know more on in depth with those with those armies uh 
at the end screen because I did go into more description with them there. So with all that being said, guys, also, I keep forgetting this. Trying to hit 500 subs before summer, so be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. For those of you who have, you're doing great. We're less than 30 away from 400, man. It's crazy. So thank you all very much for that awesome support. With all that being said, guys, thank you all very much for watching this, and I'll see you all in the next video. Farewell. Farewell.